Okay, continuing on with Critic Nautis' speech, De Bello Gallico, 7.77F, the original. Nam quid, id simile bello fuit. Okay, look, we've got some crisscrossing stuff going on here. Quid goes with simile. Illy goes with bello. Do you know what rhetorical device that is? Uh, I'm not going to spoil the fun. For... Uh, what was similar to that war? De populata Gallia Cimbri magnaque elata calamitate finibus, quidum nostris alocando excasserent, atque alias pe terras peti errant, jura leges agros libertatum nobis reliquerent. Okay, let's see. Oh, we've got an ablet of absolute. I'm sure you guys recognize those by now. De populata, galli. Kimbri here is nominative. It is the main subject. We have another ablet of absolute there. And let's see. Oh, we have another chunk here too. Finibus quidem nostris. It goes together. Nostris, nostris here is an adjective modifying finibus. Ex caserent, oh look, there's the rest of, that's the main verb that goes with the Kimbri. Atque alias teres peti errant. Notice atque is a connector, and it's connecting the two things that the Kimbri did. They ex caserent and they peti errant. And of course we have a noun adjective pair here, alias teras. So let's see. Ex caserent, so it says Kimbri, ex caserent from our borders. We have an ablative absolute here with that ginormous catastrophe having been taken away. Notice illata, that's got that root from Pharaoh, Ferre Tuli, latus there. Okay, and let's see. They left, and what else did they do? They petty errant. Notice Caesar's using some syncope there. It should actually be petty wearant, but, you know, he wants to look fancy. Alias Terras is a direct object of petty wearant. So what did they seek? Eventually, those bad guys left and sought other lands. Euras, Eura is accusative. Leges is accusative. Agros is accusative. And Libertatum is accusative. So there's a list of four direct objects. And those four direct objects go with the verb reliquarent, which also refers to what the Kimbri did. The Kimbri is a subject of reliquarent. And nobis is dative. Oh, by the way, did you notice Caesar has this ginormous list of direct objects? Jura, leges, agros, and libertatum, but no connector. That is a figure of speech. Hopefully you know which one it is. If not, ask your Latin teacher. Romani, vero, quid petant, aliud, out quid volant. Nisi, invidia, aducti. And we'll stop there because the rest of this is really long. So let's see. We've got Romani, which is nominative. And we have quid, which is accusative. Then we have the verb that goes with Romani, petant. Then we have another accusative here. Aliud, quid and aliud go together. What else? And another quid here. And then we have volant, which is another verb talking about the Romans. So we're saying, since it's a question, I would actually start with quid. Quid Romani, quid aliad Romani petant. What else do the Romans seek? Or, and aliad can also go with this quid, what else do the Romans want? Then he goes into thinking about the Romans, which is really weird because here we have Caesar pretending to be a Gaul, thinking about what the Romans might think. Huh. Okay. What else do they want unless Nisi invidia aducti? Invidia is ablative because aducti is a participle going all the way back to the Romans. Whenever you have a passive participle, you expect an ablative. What else do the Romans want unless motivated by jealousy. Now, we're still waiting to see what the verb is, but we'll keep going. Um, let's see. What else do the Romans want? Unless motivated by jealousy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to go there. Oh, here it is. 
we have the infinitive considere, which is based on the answer to what do they want. They want to consider a. And what else do they want to do? They also want to younger a, in younger a. So these two verbs are all dependent upon wollant. Hmm, is there any way we can highlight that to make it look even better? We'll try. Let's see how this goes. Wollant. Oh, here it is. Wollant is the main verb, and it's got two infinitives dependent upon it. So the Romans want to consider a, and they want to younger a. So let's take this piece by piece. Where do they want to sit? Where do they want to hang out? They want to hang out in agri's prepositional phrase, in the fields, and states. Notice kiwitatibus is states. So they want to hang out in the fields and states. And what else do they want? They want to stick Oh, there we go, perpetual slavery on folks. So they want to hang out in the fields and states of these people, these people who are going to be described in this ginormous clause over here. And they want to inflict eternal slavery on those people. Those people are also the ones who are described in this ginormous clause here. So let's see, in the fields and states of those guys, whom, notice quos goes Quos points to Horum, which is kind of dirty pool. Really, Caesar? He gives us this ginormous relative clause starting here. But notice the relative pronoun Quos is dependent upon Horum, which doesn't show up to way after the relative clause. Of course he can do that, because we are so amazing we can figure it out. So let's see. Quos is the direct object. Uh, fama can either be nominative or accusative, but if we keep going, nobles potentes squares, bello cognoverant, we know that fama cannot be the subject of cognoverant because cognoverant is plural, so fama must be ablative. So whom, according to reputation, nobles potentes que is an apposition to whom, or not an apposition, but it talks about whom. So then we've got in war and then cognoverant. The subject of Cognoware is still the Romans. So they want to hang out in the fields and cities of those guys whom, on account of reputation, they recognize or they know to be noble and powerful in war. And they also want to join eternal slavery on those guys. So, again, this is Critognatus pretending like he knows what the Romans are thinking. Or Caesar pretending like he knows what Critignatus thinks when he pretends to be a Roman. Okay, neque enum ulia alia condicioni bella gesserent. Okay, so we have here ablatives right there. Bella, of course, is a direct object of gesserent, subject still being the Romans. And neither did they wage war for any other reason or condition. Quod si ea quae in longinquis nationibus garentur ignoratus, respicite finitimum galliam, quae in provinciam redacta jure et legibus commutatis securbus subjecta perpetua premiter servitute. Oh, so he even makes allowances for people who don't keep up with what's going on in the world. Because um, if those things, okay, let's see. Oh, we have ea quae, those things, which, that goes together. But that's probably not a good place to put the quae because we have some other stuff there. So let's take that apart. Let's try that again. Um, prepositional phrase, in longies in faraway nations. Okay, because if... You are ignorant about those things which are done in faraway nations. So we have, this is our relative clause here, quae geruntur. Again, if you are ignorant about those things, what things? Those things which are going on far away. So um, what else does he say? He says, respicita finitimam galliam. If you don't know what's going on far away in the world, 
infinite or imperative here, look on nearby Gaul. What's going on in your own backyard? Nearby Gaul, which quai is a relative pronoun modifying Gaul. In provinciam redacta iure. Okay, we've got a prepositional phrase here. Then over here, redacta iure, we have what appears to be ablative. Yes, let's get a better tool for that. Okay, we have an ablative, ablative, and then we have more ablatives here. And then we have, hmm, subjecta, I think, here it is. This goes with gall, or the quai. This goes over here with quai. And then, of course, we have perpetual slavery, because those guys always go together, like that. So, let's see what he says. He says, look on nearby Gaul. Okay, and then we have this relative clause talking about nearby Gaul. Let's look at that. Which, and then we have a prepositional phrase in the province. Now, this part over here, redacta, is tricky. It could be nominative, talking about which, or it could be ablative, going with ure. The clue is this et. We are linking this et here is linking two little ablative things here. Let's take a peek. First, we'll make that pen smaller. Which, with the law having been redacted, and with these laws, these secure laws, having been commuted. So that's a big thing there. So, and then we've got subjecta, which talks about this which here. So look on nearby Gaul, which having been subjected by perpet um, is pressed by perpetual slavery, which Gaul, um, having been subjected, is pressed by perpetual slavery, so that's part of it, and then we have to throw in these ablatives, which with the law having been, I'm sorry, with the law having been redacted, and with the secure laws having been commuted, i.e. with their rule having been overturned, and this is Gaul, which is in the province, in the province, i.e., under the control of Rome. So look at nearby Gaul, which in the province, with its law having been redacted, and its other laws having been commuted, which subjected, is pressed or oppressed, I would say, by perpetual servitude.